Hi everyone, welcome back in for another US Open Classic finish alongside Mike Trosel. I'm Dave Giancola. The year is 2002 and the US Open went to Bethpage State Park's Black Course, the first daily fee public course to host the US Open in its 100 plus year history. Well, Dave, the atmosphere was electric and no surprise, Tiger Woods was once again at the top of the leaderboard through three rounds, four ahead of the young phenom, Spain's Sergio Garcia. But Tiger bogeyed the first two holes on Sunday to open the door for the 1999 runner-up, Phil Mickelson, who is looking for a few birdies in the back nine to catch Tiger. I'm looking forward to it. We pick up the action on the 11th hole. Looks like Tiger's got the three wood out. Uh, Roger on the tee at 11. He does, Dan. Uh, this is blind driving hole for the players, and the wind has just dropped to negligible. There's just not much air moving at all out here at the moment. 435 yard par four sandwiched in between uh, two of the longest par fours in open history, but uh, this one can grab you and bite you in a hurry. Takes a very hard swing at this three wood, Roger. It's going right, I believe, John. Yeah, when he makes those hard swings, those are the ones that go right. He can't get the club around to match his body speed. That is the first fairway that Tiger Woods has missed all day as we go back over to 17 and price for birdie, and he'll hear it from the fans if this one drops. <laughs> On cue, Nick. That arena awaits the leaders. 15, 16, 17, 18. Special atmosphere here at Beth Page. Tiger with a three shot lead. Beautiful shot of the skyline of Manhattan as we pull back out to Long Island. Manhattan just about uh, 25 miles due west. And you can see uh, the weather out there, which is producing swirling winds out here at. The black course, there is Phil Mickelson at the 12th. Well, he drove the ball 318 yards, so he's only got 181 left. It's a pretty good lie. I think he can skip it up through the gap in the front. They come out straight. Came out left. Needs a bounce. Oh, got it. That is a good shot there. It's hard to believe it didn't skip more since it landed on the front edge, Mark, coming out of that rough. At the 11th, Tiger in the thick rough, Raj? He is 158 yards to the hole. Has drawn a very deep lie. I don't know if he can get this one there. It'll take all his strength to do it. Let's uh, see those shoulders that are about uh, four feet wide. That's the ones that are going to do it. <laughs> this is why he is uh, he lifts and does the strength training. Yeah, he has got quite a build on him and he's going to use every ounce of it here. What's the explosion here as he drives through this rough? Trying to chase the ball through the opening in the green, and he's got enough club on it to do that. What a shot. I can't even begin to tell you how good that is. Not many guys could have played that shot at all. Well, Tiger, or uh, Roger, you tried to describe Tiger's shot up to the par 5 6 at Pebble Beach a couple of years ago. That's seven iron up the hill, 200 yards. And I, I guess you just got to watch it and appreciate it. That's just not a fair fight. <laughs> I mean, 99 percent of them can't do that. That was a very creative shot, Roger. Uh, let's take a look at Roger. I, I mean, <laughs> Tiger in the swing view right here. Well, it's a good setup there, but I'd like to see Roger in yeah. the swing view. Watch this beautiful extension. Look how straight the left arm is. Now he drives up into it from behind. He's in good shape right there. Everything is perfect. But then his body goes down and he gets cramped up. And you see how the club was behind him by the time the body was all all the way released. Uh, he was just late there and the face is open here. You can see that. And then you can see his left foot hop off the ground. Bottom line is he just swung too darn hard at it. That was past the speed that he needs on this uh, on his swing. OK Garcia second at 11. Wedge from 132. A little left of the hole. Wants it to spin if it can. Garcia running out of holes in time. Six shots back. Already 
with a win earlier this year in the Mercedes Championship, beating David Toms in a playoff. Looking for his first major breakthrough. As is away at 12, Tommy. These fans are into it, aren't they, Mark? Rolfing up probably was his fifth or sixth uh, happy birthday. They re really are, Murph. Let me just tell you, this is a, the hardest green to hit all day. Only one out of three guys are able to knock it on the green, and here we have a, a group do it, both of them. Now we've got some raindrops beginning to fall there, Mark. The rain is coming down. Uh, it's gotten very dark, and when it gets dark like this, Murph, reading the speed of a putt becomes more difficult. There's a huge rise in the middle of this green. He's got to go up and over. It's hard to just tell the exact amount of undulation right now. One hard putt and it just rips to the right the last six feet. Hard to see that in the brightest of sunlights. Very difficult hole location. Not a bad leave though, huh, Bob? Well, a wonderful leave considering where he was. He'll be very happy to walk off here with a par. And Scott Hoke. Oh, well, this will be fun. He does have enough green to work with and he slid that under the, oh, that was just, couldn't have landed in a better spot. Oh, Scott. can he go ace and, <laughs> he's gonna go ace and birdie. I mean, that right there was, he's like, can't believe how good that was. He probably would have fallen back into the cushion of that big rough and said, whew, yeah. what a way to finish. The 12. And Maggard now for his birdie try. And this time, Mickelson had to move his coin out of Maggard's line, just as Jeff did on the last hole. Slowish putt, Bob? Yes, it is, and it uh, breaks again quite a bit to the right. He started out way left, didn't he? Good read, lacking speed. At the 11th, after muscling the second shot onto the green, Tiger Woods has a birdie try, Roger. Well, it's pretty hard to call this a birdie putt. This from a little better than 40 feet and downhill swinging to his right. Two putts here is good. this swing, Roger, quite a bit, doesn't it? It does have a pretty big break out, John. his first fairway with a par at 11 to 12. Phil for par, he got a good feel off Maggard's putt as it died. He knew he had to play it inside that edge, he did. That is one terrific par. And I guess uh, we're getting word, Bob Murphy, that they're about to suspend play and indeed the horn at just past the six o'clock hour local Eastern Standard Time, so. Tiger Woods safely in with that par at 11. He's going to have a little time to think about it. And that definitely means there's lightning in the area. We're very careful with the golf tournaments and especially with the fans as we've had. Players are asking, uh, should I go in? Do we stay out here? They have, they have cars all over the golf course to carry the players. Well, let's ask David Fay about the uh, procedure here, David. Uh, the players and the officials are going to trailers and vans. Uh, they're not going into the clubhouse. Uh, this bad weather popped up very quickly, although the weather warning signs have been out since 535, warning the gallery that something might be coming. And uh, there's no indication yet how long it will last. Uh, um, let's hope it's quick. It's the uh, first suspension of play in this championship. After uh, Friday soaked the grounds here, and he thought that perhaps uh, we would see a suspension then, but they played on through it. Thank you. And, uh, 
Yeah, good news Amy. about the weather is, at least as from what our blimp Amy. can tell us, and the blimp uh, guys up there are usually pretty accurate. They say this is not a very serious uh, weather delay and that uh, it won't be a long time until it moves out of the way, but we'll have to wait and see as Nicholson uh, gets a chance to spend some time with his wife Amy out there, but there is a look at uh, the weather, which is uh, not very far away at Beth Page. But it appears that it is uh, moving away from our spot on Long Island here. Bill's there with his swing coach, Rick Smith, who cannot give him swing advice right now. Well, before the horn blew, Scott Hoke finishing up at 18 this for par. Like he has done so many times in his career, just sneaks up the leaderboard on payday. It's his sixth top 10 in the U.S. Open since the 1990. Inspired by his trip to New York. Suspension of play here in the 102nd U.S. Open Championship. Players being herded into the vans taken to safety. The leader by three, Tiger Woods, through 11. And when he gets back to play, he'll be taking on the longest par four in U.S. Open history, the 12th. Hopefully that won't be very long from now. <laughs> the most enthusiastic crowds I've ever seen. Fabulous. Well, Johnny, don't you think uh, with what Mickelson needs to accomplish here over the course of about the last six holes that these conditions couldn't be more favorable? Yeah, the thing is, it's a two-way street. It's good for Tiger and Phil, and uh, it's all about, there we go. Tom Meeks Tom with Meeks. a smile on his face. He's a happy guy. Blows the horn. <laughs> They're getting restless. Uh, it's a good <laughs> point, but uh, Tiger's in a par mode. I would say the smartest thing I can say right now is Tiger's in a par mentality right now, and Phil is in a par option birdie mentality. So Which that's could good. could be pretty, uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah. good stuff at the end here. Yeah. Tiger knows the value of a par right now, and Phil is going to be gunning. So after a 50-minute weather delay, back we go to work, and we begin at the 12th. And Jeff Maggart now for his par putt. Obviously going to be just a little slower than it was some 50 minutes ago, Murph. I believe it's just an inside firm inside the left edge. That's exactly right. No great mystery here. These greens drain very well. We saw that Friday. All right. <laughs> He's been pretty steady with that club. Interesting thing, Johnny Miller. Phil Mickelson was practicing during the delay, but we'll go here first. This is the 14th and Faldo for birdie. Faldo will remain at plus five. Plus three on his round today. And over at 11, Garcia for birdie. Get to be, well, it is, must make time for this man. Yeah, he's got to go crazy from here on in. Hasn't made a putt in a long time, but we needed. He's without a birdie today. Up ahead to the 12th. Interesting thing, Phil Mickelson is putting, practice putting on number 12 after the finish of the play of their hole. They are allowed to do this, given the fact that they are not delaying play. Kind of nice to be able to be out there and stroke a few. <laughs> We've got some commentators out there. Yeah. All <laughs> oh, these people don't need for they're, me anymore. <laughs> they root for anything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ooh. I saw Johnny Miller, Phil Mickelson was practicing his putting, uh, looking at the hole and practicing at different lengths, four feet, 10 feet, all the way out to 35, 40 feet. So trying to get a good feel after sitting for a while. 
Wilkinson's got that uh, par five to tackle Murph. Before we get to that, we go to Nick Price just a moment ago. This was the last little putt that Nick Price had. He waited 50 minutes to do that. Bogey at 18 for Price. Still with a fine round. And out to the 12th. And on the tee, Tiger Woods and Roger Maltby, we talked about it, the longest hole, par four in U.S. Open history. And what I a tee shot. I can't think of a tee shot I'd least like to hit after a 50 minute delay without hitting any balls than this tee shot. But you don't carry it 300 yards, Rog. Eight of nine fairways hit today. Well, this is just perfect. Hammered down on the left side of the bunker. Boy, that call of that extra artillery, Kenny Murph, what he needs that it. That is really good after going and sitting like that. He's not sure it's in the fairway. That was very impressive. <laughs> Well, this one needs to be impressive too because as Mark Rolfing said, he can reach this par five, 554 yards, no wind now. Before the storm, this was right into the wind. This guy hit two big ones though. The fairway is just a little bit wider too because it's a little softer. Good point. Phil's aim will just be at the right cut of the tee in front of him unless he plays a hard draw. Took it right over it. It's a hard draw. The problem is he might have pulled it just a little. Got there. Oh, Beautiful. good kick. Scooted out into the fairway. What a shot. How about those two drives? And Jeff Maggard now. Jeff will have to go left of that line. Not as strong as Phil Mickelson. Another good one here, but it'll probably be a three shot hole for sure for him. And I'm sure that's the way he's played it every day, too. Well, let's look at number 13. It's a good one. Uh, you can see it goes down through this little dip. Of course, this is nothing off the tee right here, but just uh, you want to move the ball left to right. If you can, Mickelson, of course, hitting a hook and around and over those trees there, and he's hitting about right into this area right now, probably 300 yards. Then it actually reverses itself. you got to go over this. Either lay it up right now is where Maggard's going to hit it or go over this bunker, which is 20 yards short of the green, hit the down slope and run it right on this little round green. And you can see it's sort of a double serpentine type of a hole. Mickelson's driven it about right there. And then of course he hopes he knocks it right on the green from there. And back at 12, Sergio's tee shot now. This just earlier. Patrick Harrington for birdie. This a moment ago, again at the last respite before the final four holes. There's a lot of Irishmen out there that'll enjoy this putt. And Harrington moves back to plus three, plus two on his round today. 14, the easiest hole this week. That's nice. And there is Harrington moving back in there at plus three. Seven back though is Mickelson and Woods remain the only players under par. T at 17, the site of great activity yesterday. 208 yards, full location for right there on the left side. Davis has taken dead aim at it with a four iron. Big fall through, might be going right, I'm not sure. your belly sticks out that much in your fall through, it's usually a block to the right. 
Davis Love has struggled on the back nine on the black. Even play on the front, but plus 11 on the back. Started off with a pair of 71s. Was it plus two? Was it plus four when it began the day? But plus seven on his round today as we get back over to the 12th. And Roger Malpe's down there with Sergio. 201 yards left to the hole. Looking right up to throw to the green at the flag stick. This is a five iron. Wow. Pulled badly left. Oh. Bad shot and up at 13 now. Mark Rolfing, you're right there. He has got 271 yards to the hole. That's not the number he's thinking about. He's thinking 250. That'll get him to the front edge of the green. He probably needs to carry it about 245 to get it over the bunker and rough. I definitely think he's got the firepower to get it there. You can see the look in his face. Great shot from our camera angle there of the, the mental preparation going on. He does have to bust this. It is busted very high and right at the flag. Beautiful. Just short of the green. Two terrific golf shots. So he's trying. We know that. Back at 12. Tiger now, Roger. That's from 185. Had the six iron out, went to the seven iron. Has gone back and gotten the six. What win there is, which is negligible, is against the players here. Smooth six in there, and this just a little right of the hole. Pretty good looking shot. And the fans here know it's one of the best they've seen all day. We'll collect to the right. There's a little dip over there on the right hand side. Not a terribly hard putt. And importantly, Johnny Miller said he's in that par mode. Well, Sergio right there just got, I, you know, when you waggle that many times, I, I, I just I never look at the target. That's the whole thing. I said he'll go 25 seconds without ever looking back at the target. And watch this swing right here. He'll take it back. Well, everything looks pretty darn good here. Good, good, good. Head stands still. And he comes down. There's just so much time. Look at how he broke his left wrist. You see, right after impact, his left wrist and the shaft angle were totally kicked to the left. It, I mean, this was really quite a bad shot, and he, it's a little motocross hook there is what it was. He's probably going to need some ruling help over there, too, because that is mud over there. He's, he's trying to hold on to that club. Left hand did not do its job there. And now up ahead to the par five and Jeff Maggard. 118-yard shot for Jeff. Probably would have liked to get it a little bit closer to the hole, but still a pretty comfortable distance for him. Well, without question, Mark, he needs to take this all the way back to the hole. This has been spinning quite a bit of when a player lands just short of the hole. Should be delightful. With a little rain, that's just a little extra cushion, and so she backed up a little bit more than he thought. And just a moment ago at 15, man who is third in the field in greens hit and regulation, played this iron shot up the hill from 181 yards. How about that? 
Oh, easily the best second shot we've seen at 15 all week. And now he's coming up to the green and the fans just giving him a wonderful ovation. Doesn't help but think that uh, Danny was motivated a little bit. There was an article that came out in one of the golf publications here just recently where his former teacher said that Nick was a racehorse who had turned into a cart horse. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Well, it's been a flashback week this week for Faldo, hasn't it? It has indeed. He's played very well. Back to 13. Phil Mickelson walking up now, taking a look. Has a club in his hand. Is that the putter, Mark Rolfing? Yes, it is. Probably going to trust this stick. He is not actually on the surface, but it's tightly mown right there in front. The second shot must have landed very softly. We saw him hit it. It was very high in the air, but it did not move much at all. That's right. It only landed about uh, four yards short of where it actually ended up. Matter of fact, I think I can see the actual pitch shot. This is actually sort of two putts in one, I would say. It's about probably 75 or 80 feet short of the hole. The first half of the putt is not as much uphill as it gets into the middle, and it's fairly straight, but it seems to me when it gets on that ridge, which is about 30 feet short of the hole, it's going to turn left pretty hard. It's going to turn a lot less than I thought when I went out and practiced on this green earlier, anticipating someone being down in this area. This will break maybe maybe two feet. I'd be surprised if... That's what Jim McKay's given him about that much. Phil said it's going to straighten out as it gets to the hole. That's why they play like they do. Well, you call it, Bob, as far as distance. This is all about distance. The line is one thing, but the distance right. is the big one. I think that's a terrific lag from down there, and I would call it that. And back at 12, Sergio was given a drop. Settle down. That may go all the way off the green. Good news was he had a lot of green there, Roger Mulvey. The bad news was he couldn't get a good lie on a drop, could he? No, he couldn't. Uh, that was an area where the tall fescue grass was all matted and uh, it wasn't, uh, wasn't a bargain. Well, the sounds, uh, the blaring sounds you hear in the background is not a weather delay or anything. It just alerts uh, local firemen in the uh, area here. Jeff Maggart now for birdie. said this morning there's not much pressure on me he said uh, the guy who's leading is trying to line up majors I'm just gonna go have a fun a little fun and make some birdies hopefully <laughs> steady player that man now for birdie. Having just looked back down the fairway here to see whether or not Tiger had driven, I'm sure he doesn't know that there's been a little delay back there at the 12th green. Heard Rick Smith say he likes to stay in touch with what's going on. He'd be interested to know if Tiger hit the fairway. Not much in this putt, straight in. It's a big birdie. It was filled within two. Tiger yet to putt for his birdie at 12. The 
but that's taking care of business, isn't it? And while Phil was putting, Sergio now for his par. Probably a good read there, Roger Maltby, for Tiger to see the ball go up and over that little slope. Well, the key issue is he's put it on the proper side of the green where he's left himself the uphill putt. Shot lead. Tiger still enjoys. He was grinding on that putt. I'm sure he heard Mickelson's roar up there too, would you think? Look at the eyes. He just absolutely thought it was going to stay right where he had it. Six holes to play for Tiger. And this just a moment ago at 15, the short birdie putt for Nick Faldo. People love it. Faldo to four over for the championship. Just the fifth birdie of the day here at the difficult par four. Back to 14. And a very real chance for back-to-back -back birdies for Mickelson on the easiest hole this week. This par three 14th, just 160 yards today as Mickelson has moved within two of Woods. Good hole location for him over on the right-hand side. He just needs to be careful not to spin it too much back down the front of the green. This is a mile in the air and right at the flag. Mickelson, who at one point in this championship trailed by 10. He played the first 42 holes in plus five. He's played the last 25 holes in seven under. He's got 17 birdies, the most of anyone in this championship as Tiger tees it up at the par five. And this is his strength. He's been the best the last five years on tour and birdie percentage on five pars, just over, I think it's 50%. And this is his strength. <laughs> People have run down out of the stands at 12, over to the tee at 13. Roger Mulby, he'd love to hit the drive. He hit on the last hole. Yes, he would. Big tee shot. Important to get in the fairway, obviously. Yeah, man. Too. That's going down the left side of the ferry, but I believe should be good on that line. Ooh, got a funny hop, but it's okay. Tiger took it all the way over to the left side of the tee so he could play a little draw. Just nailed it. He has a two shot lead. The par mode might not be good enough. He better make a couple of birdies. Well, look at the look right here. He's going to hit a vicious tee shot here after coming off that delay. You would think he'd swing controlled, and he has just killed it two holes in a row, just as hard as he can swing. He's taking it up another gear, Johnny. Yeah, he just, uh, I credit him. I mean, to be honest with you, 12, he just kills it out there, 3, 20, 30, and then he does the same thing here. And uh, instead of just sort of swinging within himself, he's uh, putting it in another gear. Well, maybe it's time to reach deep again after he uh, had the field get within two of him yesterday. Mickelson lurks there within two, but first to play his birdie putt at the par three 14th is Maggard. Like the rest of the players, he is running out of holes. Yeah, that birdie he did not make the last hole is a big one, wasn't it? Good distance. 
throw. Mickelson with a chance for his third birdie on the back nine. Have you looked at this, Mark? I have looked at it, Johnny. It's about 22 feet below the hole. Everybody on the tee thought it was much closer than it turned out. It's going to be a little bit on the slow side because it's back up the hill here. Let's throw the window. Scotty Jim McKay, very valuable to fill every shot. See his eyes scanning everything, finally, hopefully, has clear intention of what he wants to do and how hard he wants to hit it and the line he wants to pick out. He's obviously got a spot just about 10 feet below the hole, and it looks to me like it's just outside the right edge at that point. Johnny is coming from another hole. The people's going, let's go, Mickelson. The crowd applauds here. But you could hear it all the way from 15. Yeah, it sounds like a soccer match, if you want to know the truth. Not on this hole. Oh. See if you can get it there. Always on that side of the hole. Back to 13. And Tiger just stepping in there, Roger Mulpey. 263 yards to the hole. Wow. He likes it. Boy, it's just right of the hole. This is nuked. <laughs> So much for the pars. I'll tell you, that's just terrific. I mean, what a magnificent drive on the last two holes, and, and that shot there. He's got that look, and he's got that strut back. He has so much reserve power. He's a lot like Jack Nicholas. He'd be hitting along right even with you, and then when he needs it on a five par, he just lengthens lengthens it out. He's got it. I mean, look at that with an and iron. That's, and that's one of the, the big reasons why he became such a force, Johnny. Wouldn't you agree? Able to just gear down and uh, use it when you need it the most. Use it in the major championships, but but uh, are out of the rough. Yep. You know, when he really needs that extra power, it's a big advantage. Mickelson has his par at 14. But with uh, Tiger aboard in two at uh, 13, as Mickelson heads across the road to a difficult Final Four stretch. The challenge is great to try and catch this man who you think is going to at least pick up one on him at 13. And there it is across the street. Johnny, it's a total, totally new experience when you cross that road over to 15. That's 15, of course, and then 16's down the hill right here. 16 and then 17 is right over here to this green left hole location and then over to 18 to drive it here short of the bunker and then back right hole location there so it's a nice uh, nice little finish it's sort of almost like two two different feels you know it's a it's good stuff so much acreage out here at Beth Page State Park 1500 acre complex and the first 14 holes take you on a six and a half mile hike through uh, rolling farmland and then you come back over here and get the final four in a hurry and uh, ultimately deciding the outcome of this championship. We have found it to be an exciting <laughs> arena. Well it's nice for to this see, game. Nice to see Woods and Mickelson actually playing total quality golf right now. It's not like you know they're both sort of pars beating them and right now they're beating the course and the course is not easy. The number one and number two ranked players in the world, separated by just a couple of shots. Here comes Mickelson emerging from the fence, where they have waited a long time. 
Wow. It's like flipping open the gates or the doors to a rock concert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the players are going to have to deal with what's going to happen in the next four holes, too, because it's going to be a different level of uh, intensity with the gallery. Mark, can you hear us out there? Well, I can. It's like a heavyweight boxer coming into the ring on every hole, every tee, and every green. The only thing missing is the blaring music. Yeah, it's even going to get crazier, Mark, the next four holes you watch. But this is one of the toughest par fours in the world, right here. And Gary Koch. Well, Johnny, the fairway has been the fourth most difficult to hit in regulation. Players hitting it just over 56% of the time. There's a good look at the hole. Slight dog leg left. There's a fairway bunker down the right-hand side, but that was eliminated in the renovation. Doesn't look like much when you look at it from here, does it? No, it doesn't, but uh, it is one tough hole. Hardest hole on the golf course. <laughs> How's it look, Mark? Started down the left side. It is fading and needs a good kick. Well, he just oh, got it, baby. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be all right for him, I think, Johnny, because he's left-handed. Yeah, I think so. That is a big one inch, isn't it, right there? Yeah, very much so. Just in the intermediate cut. Back to 13. While well, Tiger walks around, Roger Malby, this man started three-putt, three-putt. Now he's putting for eagle. Seems like every time he's threatened, it's when he responds his best, and especially in majors when he's threatened. Well, that has certainly been his M.O., and this putt, although it's almost 30 feet, is really not that hard a putt, Murph. This is one he could hold. He's driven it great, hasn't he, guys? And also number one in green's hit. It's really his ball striking it's done at this time, not the putting uh, after the first two rounds. He just seems so very much in control. Every time uh, somebody pulls up there within a couple of shots, and he goes about his business. This is not a hard putt, exactly as Roger Maltby said. This could shut the doors, however, for all those who are wishing he does otherwise. Hard enough. I don't believe it's going to stretch. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, you're right. Boy, I thought it was there. You still got the good eye, Rod. I thought it was there. <laughs> Tap in birdie. Back to five under par. Even for the day, three shot lead. Tiger's eyes, he thought he made it. The club is already up in the air, giving the signal. Whoops, how did that stop? Now Sergio. Here's a man that needs a couple of birdies, missing that one. He needs a couple just for his mental feelings, I would think. He has not responded well, quite the opposite of Tiger's response to the pressure. No birdies today. Unbelievable by Sergio with all his game. No birdies. Keep waiting for the Tiger-Sergio classic duel. It has not happened. That putting, uh, the putter of his has really let him down in key, key spots, I think. So the next on the list is the short par three. One of only two holes playing under par for the week. Not a dangerous hole at all. It's one of those holes that uh, you really don't have to worry about a lot. Got the ball teed up, got plenty of green to hit to, and you're thinking birdie all the way. Well, you need to get your head together before you go over to 15 and yep. jump into the gladiator pit. <laughs> MetLife blimp, Snoopy one. Cruising the skies of Long Island, and for the record, Snoopy one never left during the 50 minute weather delay. Where the heck are you gonna go with that big thing? It's not like you can just park it anywhere, <laughs> although there's enough acreage out here, you probably would be able to set it down, but Snoopy won. 
Thanks to the guys up there on the MetLife blimp. Well, Johnny, three shot lead. He's in a really great spot right now. He could play this probably out bet 10 feet left of the hole, 160 yards. Not much wind on Roger, and uh, it's a pretty cruise on this one. He's got an eight iron, John. I would sure look for this to be left of the hole. Let's watch him, kids, how he does all this. His mannerism is, he takes just the right amount of time. Everything's just the way you want to copy. side of the green. This is well left. Well, it's sure, certainly not a gimme two putt. Across the road to 15. Second shot for Mickelson and Mark. How about the lie? It is a good one. It wouldn't be if he were a right-handed player, but now it is just fine. He's got 165 yards. Severely uphill. This whole location has been easier since the rain. Oh, it's, no, it's not going to stay. So Phil Mickelson on the front edge of the green at 15, a long way from the hole. Tiger Woods a long way from the hole at 14. Who can two putt? We'll see. Back at 15, where Mickelson received quite an ovation as he approached the putting surface. Takes a look at the leaderboard. It is just to the left of the green. That shot out of the rough had tremendous spin, didn't it? Well, it did, John. I think perhaps he was expecting it to bounce yeah. forward before it uh, dug in, but I think the soft green with the uh, rain here really hurt him there. Yeah. Probably more than helping him. But this isn't the worst spot in the world, right? No, it's not the worst spot in the world. I mean, it, I would say it's not very easy to make birdie from here to hole it, but uh, I'm not sure it's a good enough lie, Gary, that he can even putt it. Could be a fairway wood huh? or just a little flat faced chipping iron. He, I don't think he's made the club selection yet. See the slope that he is you got inspecting him. right now. And this is the most severely sloped green on the golf course. Definitely have to get it to the hole. It's going to come back if you're, what, 12 feet short? Yeah, if it were to be about 12 feet short of the hole, it would come right back to this same position. Boy, look at this club. It has got a lot of loft, Gary. What is the brow of the hill right here, Gary? Yeah, right that, there? that's just about it, John. So about uh, four paces over the brow is where the hole is located. Is he going to hit into that bank, or is he going to go up on top? I would say going up or trying to carry the ball up on top would be very risky. I can't tell what club it is. It looks like a chip and run. Come on! Great touch. Drove it into the bank with spin, huh, Gary? Yes, he did. That was a cool shot. And that was very impressive. For a tap in. All right, safely in at the difficult 15th. Nicholson with his par. We go back to 14. And Tiger Woods, lengthy birdie try. Par is looking very good on the scorecard of 26-year-old Tiger Woods at this point. We'll remain at five under as we go back up to 15. And Jeff Maggard left with a lengthy putt for par, Mark. Yeah, he'd be liking to have putts like this for birdies, but drove the ball in the left rough, had no chance.
down the hill. Little swing to the left and then straighten up. Played a very surgical, safe round, didn't he? Well, he played, uh, Jeff Maggard played, I think, the way Jeff Maggard plays when he plays well. Johnny he drives the ball in the fairway most of the time. Not particularly long, but uh, this club right here has been a big help to him all week long. I'll say. Number one in the field in uh, putting. On this his way to another top five finish in the open, Gary. All right, bogey five, so he moves to plus two. It is down to two. Mickelson, who moves to the 16th, and Woods has a short putt at 14. He did make his par putt there, so the lead is three. Wait till they throw open the gates to Woods <laughs> as he comes across at 15. Mickelson with the short walk slightly uphill to the 16th tee. But it uh, doesn't quite have the spirit of Phil Mickelson as we uh, we learned yesterday. Crowd rooting for a close competition to the end. We'll see if they get it. Woods is up by three, though. This is a tough putt to make. Tom Byram, a moment ago for birdie at the 18th. Top 15 get into the next year's U.S. Open, and Byram with an even par or two over round of 72 plus six. So he is in uh, good shape. Tie for eight. The top eight also get into next year's Masters. 16 T. So 60 feet from T down to the level of the fairway. Nicholson with the driver here at 16, just stood for a moment next to the ball, staring straight down at the ground. You only wonder what's going through his mind. Mark, he's hit 10 of 11 fairways so far today. <laughs> this one looks to be a little left. Yep, it is well left in the rough. We can see the ball looking down from above. I don't, hopefully that'll be a good sign. We'll see. Back on the tee at 15, Garcia. Made birdie at 14 to get to plus two. Good looking tee shot here going down the right center. Well, we've touched on the fact that this 15th has been the most difficult hole on the course throughout this championship. And you look at how Tiger Woods has played it. Par, par, birdie. Soul's on pace to be the second most difficult hole in U.S. Open in the last 17 years, Gary. The toughest was the 17th at Olympic with that crazy mm -hmm. uh, left to right slope that everybody was rolling off into the rough with a 4.72 average. This is 4.6. Tiger with the three wood. This ball two down the right center. This is good. It's hammered here for a three wood. Yeah, but right behind Garcia's driver. So Woods safely in the fairway at 15. Mickelson in a little bit of trouble at 16. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This was Tiger Woods' tee shot at 15. 
And when you get the little twirl of the club at the end, the, ah, yes. Just perfect. One more time. The maestro <laughs> is back at it in a major. We're at 16, Mickelson ready for his second shot. And Mark, is the lie as good as it looks? It is a very good lie. I'm pretty sure he knows exactly how he stands. I'm also pretty sure he knows that Tiger's in the fairway over here at 15. He's got a good angle. I would think he's going to try and attack here. Back right hole location. Can't come up short. Oh. I don't know whether he played for a jumper or just didn't catch it all, but that is not good. I thought he went a little deep on that good lie. You know, might have been sitting up too high. Yeah. Well, this is what U.S. Open are all about. He has missed only one fairway today. Imagine the aiming point, Gary, has got to be right in this area, huh? With a, I, maybe a I would cut. think so. Just get the ball up into the center of the green. Yesterday hit a left of the hole, and that, that was the key shot, wasn't it? It fed down by the hole and made that great putt. Right, but the hole's too far to the yeah. right to do that today. No feeding, but you want to get in the top tier. That's the key, right? We'll make the second. We'll make the putt much easier. Has 171 yards, and he selected a six iron, and that seems like a lot of club for the distance for him. But I think he's trying to ensure that he gets it on that proper level. Hill. This ball at the center of the green. And well up into the green, which should spin back a little bit. Yep. Started off with the two three putts at the first and second holes. Looked like he might give some people a chance, but since then, two birdies. And the rest bars. You might have said, I want to shoot even par today. And what do you think he's at right now? Even par for the day. Garcia now. It's an eight iron from 159. Hit two at the center of the green. Well, he will give Tiger the line and the speed. All right, up to 16, and uh, Mark Rolfing, a very important bunker shot for the man who ranks in the top 10 in sand saves on the PGA Tour, and we see he's six of eight this week. Well, he's made two beauties today already, Gary. The ones at six and seven were both, I thought, more difficult shots than this one. He's got a lot of green to work with. Ball's down toward the bottom of the bunker. It's just a slightly uphill lie. A lot of slope in the green from the right. So he's going to have to throw the ball up into that hill. So he is taking a very good look, just trying to visualize exactly where he wants to land it. Most likely, Gary, with a little cut, it will have side spin that will skew it to the left when it lands on the green. Carried it a little deep. He had the left. He just carried it too far. You're yeah. right. Yeah, still a good shot, though. I mean, it'll give him a realistic chance to save par. Here we go, Tiger. Here we go. That has been the similar refrain for each of about the last three or four groups that have come up. This Faldo received the same. Tiger going for a birdie or a first down. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, he's got about 10 yards, so uh, it's about the right distance. Up to 18. And the second shot for Nick Faldo. Plus five moment ago, coming up the hill at 18. Plus three on his round today.
And Nick Faldo, after receiving the special exemption, is going to get himself in the old-fashioned way and earn it. Yeah, that's great stuff. In this uh, Open Championship, 16. Haggard with a birdie putt mark. From about 25 feet, should turn a little right. has been overread by most players, missing it left. It just will not do what it appears. Not happy with that one. Parker so deep in the front of the green here at 16. Nicholson hits his shot. He's watching it, but he's got to get up there in a hurry. So now another crucial par putt, Mark, uh, distance? Oh, I'd call it 11 or 12 feet, Gary. It's back down the hill. Of course, the greens have lost a little of their fire with the rain. It's going to turn to Phil's right. It's just a question of how hard he decides to hit it. Tough putt to read, isn't it, guys? It but is. Uh, John, this is another one of those that uh, I think the tendency is to read into it too much, that it'll break more than it appears, or it won't break as much as it appears. Back at 15. Garcia just outside of Woods' ball, so Tiger will have a great look at the line and the speed, but not nearly as fast as some of the early ones this week with the whole location more in the center of the green. Back at 16. Nicholson for his par. Almost has to have this, Gary. I would certainly think so, Johnny. Now I'm getting the sense he knows how relentless Tiger is back there. I think he was hoping for a mistake of some kind. Bogey at 12 or maybe a par at 13. Can you stop whining that camera? Please hold the cameras, thank you. Take your time, get a good feel for it. Well, we'll go double boxes here. Nicholson in the upper left for his par at 16. Tiger with his birdie putt at 15. Nicholson misses, drops to one under. Tiger, a little tentative. It's the first short putt we've seen Nicholson miss now in the last two days. Unfortunately, Johnny, it looked like that stroke he's used so often in pressure situations, tends to pull the ball slightly. He's been pretty clutch with that flat stick, but like you say, that's the first pull like he's done many times uh, in the last few holes or Ryder Cup matches. Or, but uh, pretty heroic though around his round today. Nicholson, one of the few guys under par, one under for the day with that bogey. Woods for his par. Safely in, the lead is four with three to play. Seems pretty tiger proof, doesn't it, Gary? Well, he just seems to play the toughest holes the best, doesn't he? Garcia taps in for his par as well. Well, they're going to have just about the right amount of time uh, before daylight. I mean, the daylight ends, and uh, it's going to be right on the money. So keep moving, boys. It's got about three holes to play in, what, about 40 minutes or so before it gets a little maybe too dark to play out here out east, even though the days are long. And, and longest in mid-June. 
Should be in, should be okay though. I can tell you these guys they get on the middle of 18, they're they're gonna want to finish. They got young eyes. What a championship week it has been for Nick Faldo playing in his 60th consecutive major championship and this was a clutch performance to keep that uh, streak alive and going as he goes for birdie at 18. Because uh, this was the last stumbling block for him to perhaps have that streak snap, but he's going to get himself into next year's Open Championship. And he'll play the British, of course, and the PGA. Masters again to keep the streak alive. Tie for sixth for Faldo. 24th, top 10. Finish in a major championship. So no need for a special exemption next year for the rejuvenated Faldo. Well, par 317th, there was some magic for Mickelson with the birdie two. And one of the loudest sounds you'll ever hear in golf happened after it dropped in for two. Unfortunately, Mickelson bogeyed the 18th as he began the day five back of Tiger. Tough shot with the sun right there, 208 yeah. yards. Maybe it's an omen in the hole, Phil. Pretty darn good shot. It is a tough shot. The people that have played this uh, black course at Beth Page know uh, at this time of day, and believe me, this course always has players on it at this time of day. They know when you go to 17, it's a lot tougher because you stare right into that ball of fire at this hour. But it appears that uh, Mickelson's march to a major will have to wait for another day. Still some golf left as Tigers at the tee at 16, Gary. Again, he has driven the ball absolutely perfectly today. 11 of 12 fairways now. Certainly Gary, his putter was his big weapon the first two days, but this driver has been the weapon today. What a display. Well, that's well left. That is close to the fescue rough and okay. Well. That's going to be a tough angle, Gary. Yes, it is. Very easy for the club to get caught up in the fescue grass trying to come down at the ball. Yeah, that's not a good spot there at all. Nicholson being received like he's has all week at 17. And uh, Johnny, it could turn out to be enough, another tough pill for this 32 year old to swallow at 30 32 and still looking for your first major championship while the guy right behind you is only 26 and is looking at the eighth major. But he's going to look at it. He's an optimist. He's going to say, hey, I was 10 strokes behind. True I enough. made a great comeback. Almost got the guy. Next time, let's not get so far behind. Yep. You know, if Tiger were to make bogey, which he could do very easily, that drop into four and Mickelson go to two. So still a hole where a birdie bogey on 18 could be a force of playoffs. So it's not out of the question yet. Let's not write him off yet. He make this putt in birdie 18, then Tiger's going to have to do a little bit of extra work. So that was a fine shot by Phil with that sun setting right on the crest of the hill. That was gorgeous. And uh, Maggard still steady as can be, just getting into the middle of the greens. <laughs> yeah. This is really a scene, Johnny, I'll tell you. Boy, that's something else there. You know, and the New York fans have taken some criticism this week, uh, but I, you know, boy, the, the behavior today has been enthusiastic, uh, but as far as uh, we know, there has just not been one incident out there. And uh, even through the rainstorm and getting in and out of their seats and back they come and they quiet right down for Mickelson it's and Maggard. It's almost incredible that as, as fervent as the gallery is here in the New York area that they get this quiet. They are a very polite gallery. It's been that way all day for Jeff Maggard. He has gone along, been 
doing sort of his own business, and as soon as his ready to play, they all stopped. Be a nice par for Maggard. Still tied for third with Sergio at plus two. Well, if this somehow gets down, who knows how it'll get at 17. But before Mickelson strokes it, let's get a report on Tiger's lie at 16. Well, he has hit it very, very close to the fescue grass, and I believe the grass behind him and certainly on the right side of Earth will be. I think he's going to have to rather abruptly. I think the only way he can play this shot is to swing uh, on line with the fescue and play like a, a, a cut shot, cut across it so the fescue can't grab it. Okay, Mickelson to try an inch within three. Ball's going to turn to his left as it goes down the hill. Boy, everything but speed. That would have been a little noise if that would have gone in, I can tell you that. Back to 16. Well, I think the trouble he has, Johnny, if he tries to play the cut yeah, shot you're talking tree. about is the tree's in the way. Yeah, it could be a low little cut, you know, swing with uh, my almost like a bunker shot cut across, but I, or a tennis backhand. He better not hit it lower. He'll hit the yeah. tree in front of him. He's yeah. got to get the ball up. This from 160. It grabbed it all right. Grabbed it all right and has turned it left. Well, he's fortunate the ball gets up into the bunker. I'm not so sure too many guys could have even hit that shot. Do you, Gary? And no. Roger? I think that was his strength again being a factor. Get the club down through the fescue grass. I'm sure, most players' balls would have gone a lot lower and a lot farther left. Yeah. And at the exact same time that Tiger was hitting, this was Mickelson for par. And a Distant of a putt, which has somewhat haunted Mickelson through the years of major championships. So it pulls as he falls back to even, just like the 71st hole in, uh, at Piners in '99 against Payne Stewart, and the numerous examples through the years in uh, the Masters when uh, had he been able to get it down from about that distance uh, several times, uh, he probably would be wearing a green jacket at this stage of his career. But uh, now the lead is five. And so the major misses for Mickelson about to continue. All the runner-ups there at 99. Pinehurst number two, US Open, PGA, 2001. But it's always seemingly a part of the, of the story on the leaderboard, whether it's uh, in or out of a major championship. I'm sure Tiger heard that big groan also, but look at this shot here. All right, Tiger getting ready to play from the bunker, and Roger Mulvey, the lie appears to be very good. The lie is very good, and obviously plenty of green to work with. Saves, getting the ball up and down 64% of the time, a big improvement over last year. Gary, he seemingly has gotten so good that he just seems like he toys with the field as Mickelson 
Tees it up at 18. The par four, 411 yards down the hill. He has given this one a rip. It is headed left, though. Uh, it's going to be just fine, nice and soft. Finishing hole with that redesign of the bunker in there on both sides of the fairway and the Reese Jones renovation and this golf course, which has undergone a tremendous transformation. It was more than a bit scruffy before they revitalized it. And it's been a big part of this story this week at the U.S. Open, all the fans who have played this place so many, many times, getting a chance to see the best in the world take it on. And uh, all of them have been humbled except for uh, Mr. Woods, the only man under par in this championship. There was talk that there would be double digits under par, and Tiger in his first uh, visit here quickly uh, dispelled of those thoughts. Says anybody thinks it could be double digits under par is absolutely crazy. This is the toughest par 70 golf course I have ever seen. And remember, he's 0 for 8 in major championships on par 70 courses. He's about to do away with that little stat. Garcia now with a lengthy putt for birdie. Lag there. Maybe another day for young Surge, but the man is Tiger. Roger, you've gotten quiet. Now this little putt doesn't have much break in it, John. Most USGA championships won. Tiger Woods moving up the list. Going to tie Jack Nicholas, Joanne Carner, and Bobby Jones will be one ahead. Just a matter of time before he tops that list. Three U.S. juniors, three U.S. amateurs. Nice stuff. Couple of opens. Same amount of effort into it, whether it's a practice round or the U.S. Open, Roger. Well, he does, Johnny. His preparation is uh, second to none in effort. His putt moves ever, ever so slightly to the right. Boy, and those two bogeys by Mickelson at 16 and 17 looming even larger with Tiger's uh, bogey there at 16. It's second to 18 now. From 164 yards, just left of the flag. Pretty good leave, Mark. Tiger did tap in for his bogey at 16, so Tiger drops to four under and you can see Mickelson in some sense is very relieved you can see all the tension is gone I think when he missed the birdie putt at 17 that's why he missed the second one it was gone uh, Maggart that's a nice swing a reverse C high short iron see if you got it all oh just missed Jeff that was a good shot too but that's a good bunker shot as long as it isn't buried it's a nice uphill shot Right in the fall line so you can knock it close and stop it quickly. You see, look at him on his face. He's just like going to the movies. Well, this man is uh, the leading starring role <laughs> once again at a major championship. Just seems to toy with the field. You know, he's won these things, uh, Johnny, by large margins in the past. You know, 15 shots, 12 shots, and eight shots at major championships. It just seems to me that he still would have the firepower to do that, but he, he just doesn't, he, 
the last two days, he's kind of clicked it into the new gear when he's needed to. And we saw him hitting the driver full out late in the stages today. And this seems to have the gear to I keep felt, it out of reach. It's funny, but I mean, if Phil were to make this putt and get to minus one, you just never know. I mean, with Tiger missing that putt, he could bury it under the lip of the bunker, Tiger on 17. You never know. It's not totally over. But he needs to make this. Garcia at 17 as that sun has dipped down a little further, so it's making the view a little easier down there. 208 yards. Probably a five or six iron. It's a five iron, John. Right at the flag stick. Oh, that's a long five. Okay, little guy like that hitting a five iron carrying about 212. Garcia currently in a tie for third. Again, was four back of Woods when they began the day. Tigers pulled the five iron too, John. Yeah, Sergio hits his irons there with anybody. Distance wise. You can see the resolve. He's saying, I don't, he did not like that bogey, I can tell you that. He didn't want to put any possibility of messing up. Got it back in his stance pretty good to keep the ball right. Well, from the 18th green, backed him off. It's a maggard bunker shot on 18. Big, full, beautiful ball right through. Right at the flag stick. He just knew it was on. That was a perfectly synchronized swing. Great balance. Fired the right side. Right down the line. Wow. Over at 18. Nicholson for birdie. So he moves to the right big time. Like I said, he looks like he's going to the movies. But he's played a courageous championship. Um, made a good charge yes, after the slow start yesterday. Like I said, this is an easy, easy bunker shot. Uphill and the ball will not roll much. It'll just land and just one little hop probably and stop. Maggard tied for third with Garcia. Gives him a good chance to stay there with Garcia behind him. So the par putt for Maggard, one of the unlikely figures to join in this chase for the championship this weekend. It will finish in the top 10 again at a U.S. Open. His sixth top 10 in the U.S. Open. Open is the most of any player since 1990, along with Scott Polk, who you saw finish up earlier. So forget about Reese Jones. Maggot's the open doctor. And a round of 70 for Mickelson, even par. Good playing on the weekend, 67-70. And it will be his seventh top three finish in a major, the most of any player in the history of the game who has never won one. So Mickelson keeps knocking on the door. He just can't get through. The password is Tiger Woods. T-I-G-E-R. So just the twosome left on the golf course at 17. at the Masters uh, a couple of months ago, Johnny, when Tiger was tied for the lead after three rounds. He finished with that, uh, I guess you could say for his abilities, a fairly pedestrian 71, but his closest pursuers uh, never pushed him. A lot of talk about how everybody kind of folded and let Tiger win another green jacket, but 
Pretty good round by Mickelson, who shot the even par, but outside of that, Garcia's gone plus three. Maggard plus two, and really Mayfair was a contender today, plus four, and Allenby plus seven today. It's a pretty big putt right here for Sergio. Uh, through all of this, not making really anything to speak of on the greens, he can make this putt third by himself. He pars 18. Just going to show Tiger the line a little bit and the pace again. Not much break. He thought it was going to break left, but it was almost dead straight. Garcia, a contender in the U.S. Open for the second straight year. Remember, he was tied for 12th last year at Southern Hills. He was just a shot back after 54 holes, but he finished with a 77 last year. He keeps looking around. And at this stage of the game, the crowd getting on his nerves a little bit again like they did yesterday. I think he's had far fewer disturbances today than yesterday. Well, he hasn't really been in the, the, the cauldron of the competition. I mean, you know, Sergio kind of was feeding off that energy yesterday. Roger, this is probably going to go in. This is about as easy as you get. Yeah, this is the stage for it. It's amazing how many people are around this green. Not much here, is it? I mean, no, I don't think there's very much break in this putt at all, John. Sergio's is really an inside the hole putt, and this one I think is right down the draw. Comfortable speed. Let's get it going and run right in there. Well, that was a good looking tee shot. Both of these guys hit really from 208. John? Yeah, he might have pulled it to get it going left and then it broke left. Late in the day, that's one thing about the last group out there. Uh, there are few footprints, even though these greens are about as good as you can get them. They're going to run as good as they did at 1 o'clock this afternoon. to wrap up his second U.S. Open title. Just the 18th for Tiger Woods. Well, his dad, uh, Earl, says that you haven't seen his best golf yet. That's a scary thought, but it seems like it might be true. Uh, you bring up Earl Woods. Uh, he really was turned on to the game of golf for the very first time here in the, the New York area. It's beyond my comprehension that you can go one level above, above where he is right now, but uh, at his age, his age, 26, and his power, natural ability, maybe he'll just keep sharpening the knife, you know? Tiger's father was uh, introduced to golf at a place called Diker Beach Golf Course near the Verrazano Bridge in Brooklyn. Played it for the very first time and got absolutely hooked on the game of golf. Yeah. Just was intrigued by it. In fact, uh, just a little bit later on, played the black course here at Bethpage State Park some 30 years ago and just said he was absolutely humiliated here. <laughs> Sat under a tree after uh, scoring a very big number. And uh, But uh, it's ironic, isn't it, that uh, in this New York area, that is what spurred on the father of Tiger Woods and the rest is history after he got his kid hooked on the game at a uh, very, very early age. Okay, so big hole for Sergio. Uh, Got a chance, he's tied for third with Jeff Maggard, plus two. It's a birdie hole if he can hit the fairway. Even though it's a tough, tough hole location.
That ball went underground. What a difference a couple feet make on this oh, golf course, huh? Maybe not the highest U.S. Open rough in history, but all of the players will tell you it is the thickest, most dense, most uniform rough they have ever seen. And this man has uh, stayed out of it for the most part, especially off the tee today. And they haven't been able to cut it since the rain, so it's gone probably up in the five, six inch range now. Look at the width of his shoulders and the, and the shape that he's in. I mean, this guy is an athlete, strong one. This ball right down the dead center of the fairway, John. Going out in style, Roger. 12 of 14 fairways. 14 of 17 greens in regulation. It adds up to another U.S. Open title. Tiger Woods on his way to another major championship coronation with a four-shot lead. And all the fans who have been waiting here all day long are about to bring them up. We'll be right back. Well, before we bid uh, Long Island adieu, reminder coming to NBC in a couple of weeks, the U.S. Senior Open Championship. A couple of weeks on Saturday, June 29th, our coverage begins on NBC as we're just getting things started summer USGA schedule. Tiger had the first round lead. He grabbed it on Thursday with his opening round of 67 wire to wire champions with no ties. Now a chance to do it again here after accomplishing it at Pebble Beach. Come the sixth player to win wire to wire with no ties. The first player to do it twice. He's out on the fairway. 18th with a four shot lead. 192 left to the hole. I'm going to tell you, if that weather delay had been another 10 minutes, we wouldn't be finishing. The light is getting pretty dim. Yeah, it looks lighter on your television because of our irises and our camera are able to create a more lit effect. But as we look back out our 18th tower here, it's pretty dark out there, Raj. It is. Tiger has selected a five iron. Middle of the green, huh, John? Oh, no doubt about it. Um, Come just, on, folks, think, hold up, please. I think he wants the shot that'll just make it the easiest uh, on himself. Right. Check out where his eyes look. Just barely left, maybe 10 feet left of the target. This ball starts at the left side of the green, really not cutting too much, left center of the green. Boy, he just keeps hitting those greens, Roger. He, he just clinically took apart this golf course and he couldn't have shot any higher than he did, to be honest with you. This isn't a round that he had to scramble and gut it out. This was just ball striking personified. Garcia now from the rough has not drawn a good lie. This is very deep. Well, he'd preferably hit this ball a little bit to the left for a better angle, but he's looking right at it. Well, he got a lot of ball, Roger. Boy, he sure did. The ball just jumped straight up out of the grass. Little carry. Not quite. Man, that came close to being a sensational shot. And that'll be a little bit interesting, but not impossible. I was down in there this morning, and as long as he isn't buried or some weird stance, he'll be fine. Tiger now, of course, is in the joy mode. And they roll out the red carpet wherever Tiger Woods plays around the world. But what cannot be ignored is the fact that uh, he began his uh, now legendary career on a public facility growing up 
His family couldn't afford to join any private clubs. As you look at his mother, welcome him up to another major championship. He first played Navy Golf Course in Long Beach, California at the age of three. And if you ask him about it, he'll say, I remember the difference the first time I played a country club. The greens were so smooth, it wasn't like putting on Velcro. I started off in the public golf courses, but its uh, I don't know if there could be a more fitting and perfect example to win that trophy and win it on a golf course, first truly public facility to host a U.S. Open and have Tiger Woods win it. You see coming up uh, how the pressure all went out of him and how joyful and how lightly he walked up that hill. That was nice to see. Hard earned. Rich beyond his wildest dreams, but uh, and you can see New York. The time when it all started years ago. You can see that line of New York's finest there. The line off short of the green there, and this was not a good break by Sergio. But as they say in golf, everything that happens on the golf course makes somebody happy. Just chunk it out, Roger. Just chunk it out and tumble it up there if you can do it. That's a fine shot. Yeah, it's a good play from there, John. Well, let's go down to Mark Rolfe. All right, thank you, Dan. Phil, yesterday at one point you trailed by 10 shots. You scratched, you clawed, you rallied, you came up a little short. Are you pleased at this point or disappointed or both? I had an unbelievable day today. It was the most amazing feeling. It felt very similar to the 99 Ryder Cup, and, and I had such a great time today. I'm sorry that I came a little short, but to be able to compete for such a, a great championship was a, was a wonderful feeling and a wonderful opportunity, and I certainly enjoyed it. It was very difficult uh, when, when Tiger did not uh, come back at all. So when he, when he made a couple bogeys early, I thought that this might be a, a good opportunity. Uh, it was very difficult to make birdies out there, but I had a, I had a great time, and it was a, an incredible, incredible experience. I know you keep close track of what Tiger's doing back there. When you got to within two shots after the birdie at 13, did you think he might make a mistake? Well, I thought that uh, when I birdied 14 or 13 and got within two, I thought that I had a very good opportunity. I knew I would need to make a couple of birdies. Okay, Tiger's going to put it 18 real quick here. Okay. Hang on. Woods for birdie. Big slicing putt here by Tiger. Tough to get inside three feet. Back to you, Mark. All right, Phil, quickly, what will your most vivid memory of Beth Page this year be? I, I cannot believe the reception from the people here. It's been it's been just tremendous. and and. The game of golf has, has certainly benefited by benefited by bringing this championship to such a wonderful venue that everybody can play. The, pe the anticipation for this event uh, was incredible, and, and I don't think that it uh, was anything short of what was expected. It was just a tremendous, tremendous event, and everybody involved uh, had a wonderful time. Congratulations on a great performance. Thank you. Dan? Thank you, Mark. As the final two finish up at 18, Garcia. Well, we've seen this putt, uh, Roger, miss nine out of ten times, barely right. Needs to sink this to tie Jeff Maggard for third. Yeah, it's a pretty big putt, money-wise. Yeah. Oh, that was such a good putt. Seventy-four for Garcia. He began the day four back. Stage is cleared for a man who's about to become the sixth player to win the Masters and the U.S. Open in the same year, but become the first in three decades to do it. And with the way he is playing, I would like to see what the odds would be to finish the job later this summer.
started with a couple of three putts, Johnny, and this is um, a non-event, but uh, I would hit this one a little easier, actually. Tiger Woods halfway to the slam and his second U.S. Open championship. And at Beth Page, he is now the people's champion. Well, the best player won. What can you say? And it's a phenomenal course, and it produced that. That's a mark of a great golf course when you can get really the right guys, number one and two, finishing right there in the world. Plus two round of 72 is good enough for Woods. He gave himself the four-shot cushion. And he wins his second Open Championship in the last three years. Well, the British Open at Muirfield is next in five weeks. Hmm. PGA Championship at Hazeltine in August. At one point in this sport, just ridiculous talk to think about a man that could win all four in the same year. He's won four straight major championships. The Tiger Slam, but the real slam is still in the balance. And Tiger Woods has delicately put the second piece in a very tough puzzle. Halfway home at four under par, the only player in the field to finish under par in this championship. <laughs> Tiger Woods is on another major run to history. And we'll be back to hear from the champion when we come back to the black. And when there's history to document, and it involves Tiger Woods, and the waning light here on Long Island, it creates an even more dramatic scene. The biggest star on the sports planet today is just about to get bigger. Seventh major championship in the last 11 play. And we'll hear from the two-time U.S. Open champ when we come back. Well, there goes the people's champion back out amongst the people at Beth Page, getting ready for the official presentation of the trophy. I got a sigh of relief. Seventh uh, major in the last four years, the most by any player in a four-year period. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 102nd champion of the United States Open. Tiger, it's uh, somehow appropriate that a man who learned to play golf on a public course should win the U.S. Open when it comes to a public facility like this. Congratulations. As was the case at Pebble Beach, you are the only man under par, but it wasn't that easy, was it? No, it was not that easy. This, this golf course was playing awfully difficult today with the wind blowing as hard as it was. Phil got off to a great start, and he played well all day. And, you know, I didn't get off to the greatest of starts, but uh, I just tried to hang in there somehow, and... 
it was going to be a long, long, tough day, and uh, I was fortunate to come out on top. When you think back on this week with all that's happened, with all this event has been, is there one image that sticks in your mind? What will you remember? <laughs> there is sir, so many. You know, the one, uh, I guess, playing in the rain. I mean, it was an absolute uh, downpour. And then uh, on top of that here, finishing in the dark with uh, seems like strobe lights were going off when I was putting. Uh, it was. Uh, You've done that before. I have done that before. And, uh, you know, I, I like the results. People will talk about the slam. Uh, you have talked about just wanting to win any tournament that you enter. The historical significance, significance is undeniable. Is that something that's in your mind? Not right now, no. I'm going to celebrate this one and then uh, have a good time. This one was uh, hard fought. I mean, it was, it was brutal how hard this golf course was playing. And uh, the competitors this week put up such a, a great challenge. And, uh, you know, I would like to win, win, the, win the slam. I've done it before. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can do it again. Tiger Woods, congratulations. The champion of the 2002 U.S. Open. Well, it'll be a fun ride this summer to see if Tiger can check off another one on the list. All four majors in the same year. Don't forget, coming to NBC in a couple of weeks, the U.S. Senior Open Championship on June 29th. And coming up next, except on the West Coast, on an all-new Dateline NBC, Casey Martin won a tough court battle to use a card on the PGA Tour. It's Dateline NBC, the subject, then Law & Order, Criminal Intent, followed by Crime and Punishment. What a week at Beth Page for our entire NBC golf crew. Dan Hicks saying congratulations to Tiger Woods, the Open champion again.